Port Arthur is a small city located in Texas. Port Arthur is one of the smallest cities in America, however, it has the largest oil refinery in the United States. In 1895, Arthur Steelwell founded the city of Port Arthur. Port Arthur holds one of the highest unemployment rates in America. It has a high rate of natural disasters, oil spills, and has some of the most toxic air in the world. Port Arthur is the second most miserable city in America, and following this latest pandemic, may now be number one. Living in Port Arthur is a sentence to death as cancer plagues the oil town. Why is Port Arthur so oppressed? To get the answer, we have to take a look at Bible prophecy. The elite are hiding the truth of biblical prophecy within their mystic teachings. The Messiah, the Mashiach, will be a human being descended from King David, will not necessarily have to do miracles. There will not necessarily be any change in the laws of biology, physics, uh, etc. What will change is the human being, but not an intrinsic change in our nature, but a change in which we will move towards better morality, better ethics, better spirituality, and move towards what we are supposed to be doing in our lives. The truth is, the Messiah is human, and Satan has a secret war against his people, the descendants of ancient Israel. Revelations explains the motivation of Satan and the worldly power he employs in his end-time battle against the Messiah and his people. Satan's sin is the refusal to accept the Messiah as a mortal man. This is also the Antichrist spirit he has placed in this world. Port Arthur is the main battleground where Satan is implementing his motivation for achieving victory over the incarnate Messiah. Arthur Stilwell, the founder of Port Arthur, was a Christian scientist and master of mystic sciences. Stilwell often spoke of the mystic Christ and the role Port Arthur would play in his vision of the Jews returning to the Promised Land. All events on earth must coincide with biblical prophecy. Port Arthur was first named Aurora. Aurora means dawn and it is used as a reference to the dawn toward the first day of the week Christ returned from the dead. Mysticism teaches Christ is himself the truth, and Christ can be found in Aurora. In a published letter, Stilwell states he studied metaphysics for 35 years as he sought the source of truth. He writes, May they reach the millions hungry for the illuminating truth, which will banish sickness, bring happiness, and the joys of a living life. The instrument of liberation is the truth. He who said, The Son shall make you free, also said in the same connection, Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The Son is the agent, and the truth is the instrument. The Word of God, in which Christ is the central and all illuminating truth. Still will confess that he has been visited in his sleep throughout his heyday by guides that he called brownies. In dreams, these beings gave him the plans of his railroads, the location and layout of the city of Port Arthur. So Port Arthur is a spiritual city given to earth by spiritual intervention. But why? Because of the Holy Grail prophecy. The Holy Grail is always associated with the name Arthur. We also see that Christ of the Holy Grail is also the great Christ of the cosmos. According to the Bible, the Messiah is born in America. Matthew 24 and 27, For as lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Stillwell and his secret order surveyed the area of Port Arthur to prepare it for the arrival of the Messiah. Ancient prophecy speaks of the Messiah appearing upon the Golden Triangle. The Port Arthur area is known as the Golden Triangle. The Messiah who appears upon the Golden Triangle is the same Messiah to stand upon the Golden Triangle the golden capstone upon the altar of the Lord, which today is called the Great Pyramid. The mystics built a hospital and named it St. Mary. The mystics knew the Messiah would be delivered by St. Mary. After the birth of the Messiah, the mystics changed the name of the hospital to Christ us because the Messiah is now with us. This is a Masonic Lewis. It is a cornerstone the Masons never use. Masons never use this cornerstone in building because biblical prophecy states the cornerstone that the builders reject becomes the chief cornerstone. Masons are the builders, and Lewis, the Messiah, is who they reject. Each one of these symbols are called the Lewis. Number four is known as the Unk, and number eight is called the Holy Tau Cross. The mystics understand the importance of this Lewis symbol, yet they hold it as a mystery. The Most High used this Lewis or Tau to mark his saints. Ezekiel 9 and 4. The Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the forehead of the man that sighs and that cries for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. The Most High Saints had their heads marked for salvation. 
the mark made was that of the towel. The towel represents the saints in the body of Christ. The Most High identifies himself as the Alpha and the Omega. In Hebrew, it is Tau and Aleph. The lower Lewis or Tau represents the body, the saints, the church, the bride, the nation called Lewis. The Messiah is sent down from heaven to join and lead his people. Messiah is the head, the Christ, the priest, the husband, the king, and together they make the key of life, humanity's redemption. The end of days mark that will be upon the saint's forehead mentioned in the book of Revelations will be of the unified Lewis, the Alpha with the Omega, the Messiah dwelling with his saints. Satan's sin is the refusal to accept the incarnation of the Messiah as a man. Satan uses rebellion as his motivation to kill and destroy the saints. The Bible tells us at the end of time, Satan will make war with the saints. Satan uses witchcraft to kill the saints. Here is the symbol of the crescent and the star. This is a satanic Luciferian symbol used by witches and warlocks to summon the power of Lucifer to cast their spells. An essential part of black magic is the death candle. It is lit to bring death and plague to a certain person or group of people. The death candle is made of dead plants and animals. Some witches make and use corpse candles from the stalks of mullein plants, turning them into torch-style lights. This is accompanied by cutting a white cloth into long strips and soaking them into oil. The witch adds animal fat around the cloth and covers it with wax. These torch-style corpse candles are placed around the ring to burn during outdoor necromancy rituals. Fossil fuels are made up of dead plants and animals. This is a witch's torch and cauldron. Here is a refinery torch and cauldron. Motiva is a Saudi Arabian-owned company. Motiva is an Islamic company. The same crescent and star of Lucifer is the same crescent and star associated with the Motiva company. The Motiva refinery cauldrons also show the same star and moon symbology. The great sword on the Saudi flag represents the great sword given to the rider on the red horse to kill and make war. Satan uses his motivation to rebel against the Messiah, to kill the saints and keep them separated from the Messiah. Drop the T-I-O-N from motivation and it becomes Motiva. The Messiah without his saints cannot complete the mission of heaven. And the saints without the Messiah can never fulfill their biblical destiny. Motiva is short for Satan's motivation to kill. The logo is symbolic of the block it has put in place to keep the Messiah and his people separated. The Messiah has come. He is King Louis. It is not his prayer that any should perish. If his people, which are called by his Louis name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek his face, and turn from their wicked ways, then he will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. Unite with King Louis, and he will take back rulership of the earth from Satan. Amen.